Hello everyone, I just wanted to give you guys a brief introduction to using the terminal. I suspect at this point most of you guys are at least a little bit familiar with terminals, um, but hopefully you'll be able to pick up a few tips and become just a little bit more efficient at using your computer. Uh, I'll try and keep this as short as possible. So, a little bit of history to start off. Uh, a long time ago, um, people wouldn't actually own their own computer, and they were very expensive. A department would buy a mainframe to be used by everyone and maybe spend a million dollars on it. And then to share that with everyone in their organization, they would go ahead and buy dumb terminals. They're just text-based boxes with little more than a screen and a keyboard, and they would connect to the mainframe. So today, we don't have terminals and mainframes that we connect to like that. We have far more powerful local personal computers right here on our desks. Um, so what we use instead are known as terminal emulators. Uh, why would we ever want to use a terminal emulator? Well, they can be much faster than using a mouse. Um, they're very good for navigating your file system, for example. It can be much more qu much quicker to type the names of the directories you want to move through than uh, hunting for them in a list of files and clicking on them with the mouse. So I have two pieces of advice I'd like to share at this point with you guys. Um, first is to find good tools and invest the time to become really good at using those tools. This investment is going to be really important and it will keep you from having to work extra hard to figure out and struggle with tools that are clunky or things that you're not familiar with. And second, uh, master the tools that let you work from anywhere. This is particularly important should you find yourself needing to work from home. For example, if there's a global pandemic or if you want to work from someplace a lot more enjoyable, like the beach, for example. In three weeks, I'm headed to Las Vegas. I can totally do my job from there. I can still connect. I can still upload videos. Um, you guys will never even know that I've left and I'm not sitting in my basement right now recording videos when I'm gone. Um, when we run a terminal emulator on our computer, uh, for example, like PowerShell on Windows, or it's actually called Terminal on a Mac or Linux, um, that is a program that's going to run another program called a shell. And now a shell is very, very simple. It really only does two things. It lets me move through the folders or directories on my system and look at all the files. And it lets me run programs. It just asks, what should I do? And I type it a command. Then it asks, what should I do now? And I type another command. So we have actually quite a few options when it comes to different shells that we will be running within our terminal emulator. Here's just an example of some of them. Uh, CMD over here is the default Windows uh, shell. Um, let's see, PowerShell is the one I'll be using. Uh, the Windows version CMD doesn't generally accept a lot of Linux style commands. They've got their own list of commands they use. And the developers of Windows recognize that there are a lot of Linux and Mac users out there who want to use the commands they're familiar with. So PowerShell will accept those. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones out there. They all end in SH, you know, for shell. Um, the one that you'll get to when you use the CSL machines is the uh, Bash. That's the Born Again shell. A little history there. Uh, the Born shell was developed by Stephen Born back in 1979. They made some improvements and it became the Born Again shell, uh, abbreviated Bash. That'll be the default one you see when you log into the CSL machines if you take no action to change what you're going to get out of it. All right, quick demo time. I'd like to do my demonstration on the CSL machines. That's where we're going to be doing our work. It's where we'll be grading your homework. And because I'm using a Windows computer, I need to download uh, an SSH client. Um, the one I'm going to be using is called Putty. I've got the link in the description, otherwise it's just putty.org. If you're using a um, Mac or a Linux machine, uh, you can just go straight into Terminal. It's got a built-in SSH client right there in your terminal, so you can just go to Finder, use Terminal. I don't have a Mac, otherwise I would demo that too. apologize. Um, so. The, one, the version I want is actually I've, uh, the Windows installer, um, and I've got a choice, the 32-bit or 64-bit. The 32-bit works in all cases. The 64-bit will be faster, but it requires that you have a 64-bit processor and you're using a 64-bit version of Windows. If you're not, uh, go with 32-bit, and if you're willing to be a little more patient and you're not sure, go with the 32-bit. Uh, I'm using the 64-bit myself. Okay, so you'll just download that installer, click it, it should download, you'll double click it and install it. I've already done that, so I'm just going to move on. 
All right, so now we're looking at the computer system labs, the CSL for UW-Madison, um, and these are the available Linux machines. I've got the link for this in the description also, and this is actually the instructions for making an SSH connection. This is what they recommend. Right here you see they recommend using PuTTY, and that's what we'll be using. They've got some other options here as well um, that you're welcome to read about. I'll put the link to this page in the description also. All right, so to make that connection, I'm gonna go to my start menu, and I'm just gonna type PuTTY. Because it's installed, that'll bring up the app for me. I can click that, and now the host name that I wanna connect to is my username from the CSL, Dosher at, and then the computer that I wanna to connect to is best, uh, bestlinux.cs.wisc.edu. I hope that's large enough for you guys to see. It's your username, whatever the CSL assigned you when you activated your CS account at bestlinux.cs.wisc.edu. Okay, and that will just look at these um, labs of computers. These are the, they've got four different labs, Rockhopper, Royal, Snares, and Emperor with, so, you know, this one has seven computers, that one has 10, this one has 30. It'll find the best one, the, the one that's least used right now and connect you with that one. All right, um, when you put in this and you get it working, you can actually save this profile. I've got mine down here under Best Linux so that I never have to type this again. All right, I'm gonna click Open, and that will take me to the CSL. Um, this is the PuTTY um, terminal emulator, and this is the Bash shell. To log in, I just need to do type in my password. This is the CS login password. and this will take me to the CSL computer. Okay, now this is really tiny, so I'm gonna go take a second and make this bigger, and, oh, quick, before I do that, I suppose you guys are on a, a Mac or something like that. Oops, wrong one. I'm gonna go ahead and open up PowerShell. It's the closest I can get to the terminal you'll find on your computer. Go to Finder, open up Terminal, and if you want to, um, to connect to the same computer, uh, you're just gonna use the command SSH for secure shell, and then that's um, dosher at best-cs.edu. Okay, but this isn't gonna work because PowerShell doesn't have SSH built in. But if you're on a, a Mac or Linux, this is how you do it. All right, so as soon as I've logged in, there's all this stuff about the uh, Linux computer that I've connected to. I can see down in the lower left-hand corner that I am using the Bash shell. Um, this is my prompt right here. It's telling me that I'm logged in as Dosher. I'm using computer Royal 13. This is, uh, I believe, line one, and the dollar sign ends the prompt. So all of this stuff here is the prompt. That's where the, the, um, the shell is asking me, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? So right now there's a lot of garbage on the screen that makes this hard to see and a little confusing. So I'm gonna type clear to make that all go away. Next thing I wanna show you guys is how do you figure out where you are if, if it doesn't tell you. PowerShell uses the directory path as the prompt unless you change it. So, but the command to figure out exactly where you are is pwd. This is my home directory. And you can see that on the CSL machines, it's got a whole bunch of uh, Dash U is for users, slash D because my last name begins with a D, second letter of my last name is an O. They have, uh, I have no idea, maybe 100,000 people on their system, so they've got all the users divided up like this. Uh, so I mean, this is my home directory. If I just have a look here, I can see what files I've got by typing LS, and you guys can see here all the stuff I did when I was a graduate student here, uh, all the files and the stuff that I've accumulated that never went back to clean out. If I move into one of these directories, like uh, private, and I do an ls here, I can see even more stuff that I've accumulated that I never got rid of. Anyway, um, to go back to the home directory, I can use cd tilde, and that'll take me back to the home directory. So there I am, udo dosher. All right, so the next thing I wanna do, let me actually go to a private, I've got a teaching directory, here I have 368, move there, and then let's do, actually I'm going to put this in with homework one. What did I call it? Yeah, homework one. 
If I push tab, that will automatically complete things. So all I need to do is get started. Here I just push H. When I tab, it'll finish writing the entire word for me. It makes navigation very quick. All right, and I don't think there's, yep, this is an empty directory. and I don't have any, any content here yet at all. All right, so I talked about moving. If I want to go down just one directory, I can do cd dot dot. That'll take me back one directory. And now I can see that I'm in UDO Dosher Private Teaching CS 368 Homework. Not where I want to be. I want to be in Homework 1. So put in Homework 1. Okay, to make a directory, suppose I want to make a, a directory for this demo. I can use make direct, uh, but I move the focus over. Yep. Make directory is mkdir, make, make dir, and let's call this demo. So now I should see that I have a uh, directory here called demo so we'll do cd to change directory into this demo directory now the next thing i want to talk about is well making files and printing stuff out to the screen so echo command is just going to take whatever argument follows it um, and just print it to the screen just like that echo hello prints hello right there on the screen next line down not super useful but what i can do is use input redirection and I can t take the text following the word echo. The uh, right angle bracket is going to let me put store this into a file. So let's call this demo.txt. Okay. Now, to read the contents of that file, I can use the command cat. Oh, here, let me just uh, verify that it's actually there. Yep, demo.txt is there. So I used ls to list that. Next, cat will actually read the contents of the file. So I can read demo.txt, okay? And it prints out hello again. All right, the next thing I want to show you guys, if I echo a different word to demo.txt, uh, in this case, I'm going to put in nuked. It's going to, oh, it gives me an error here. I cannot overwrite existing file. So PowerShell will let you do this. All right, maybe I'll go back and demo that in PowerShell in a second. Um, so... Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. That gives me an error. Um, if I do want to add to the file, I can use the double um, right angle bracket, demo.txt, and that will just append to the end of it. So now if I cat demo.txt, it's got two words there. I'd like to point out too that every time I put in some text, it automatically added a new line. So I don't have hello world jammed together as one word. It put in a new line here, and then it put another new line there. That's very common. Even uh, Vim will do that. Uh, Emacs will do that. Uh, just the re input redirection does that. There's also uh, the other version of input redirection. If I had some program I wanted to write uh, to run, suppose I've got my C++ program, I can use this arrow. and. This isn't going to work because there's no C++ program here. That's fake. I just wanted to demo the syntax. But um, what this will do is every time you have like a prompt the user and ask them for some information, it'll go to this file and get it instead of the keyboard. So this demo.txt file now is going to replace the keyboard. We're going to be using this a lot for like just all of the test scripts that I give you guys for the homework. So uh, this will be something you want to know. And I'll remind you in the next homework description when we actually need that. Oops, forgot to mute the system sound. All right, sorry about that. Okay, next up, um, I'm talking about moving and copying files. So if I ls, or list, that gives me the contents of the directory. So if I want to, I can uh, copy this to a different location, or I can use the copy command to rename it. So cp, if I want to just make a copy of this in the directory that's up from here, I can copy demo.txt to the previous level of directory structure and I'm going to call it demo copy uh, text. Okay, that uh, and then if I go up a directory and ls, there it is. I made a copy. Okay, it's made a horrible blunder. Needed to edit that out. Hopefully, I didn't screw up too much. Um, so anyway, I, I just left off. I listed. I've got. I'm in a directory with demo text. Uh, if I want to rename something or move the file, I can use mv and then demo.txt. This can either take, uh, 
uh, a new location for the file or if it's the same directory I can just uh, rename it and because this uh, file says hello world let's just call it howdy.txt and then when I do my list the directory I see that demo.txt is gone and I have howdy.txt so that's a way to rename things I can also use this to just move stuff around so I can move howdy.txt to the previous directory and call it howdy.txt and now I see that it's gone but if I back up if I change directory one level higher and list there it is it's right there okay next I want to talk about getting help so I'm gonna clear the screen we're on the next topic the command to get help on different uh, Linux commands and a lot of uh, C or C++ functions also is just man it's short for manual like the instruction manual um, so if I want to grab instructions for PWD which was print working directory all right so here we go we've got the manual page pulled up for PWD uh, up here it tells me that PWD is, uh, stands for print name of current working directory and it takes options and the square brackets means they are optional here's some of the ones we can put in um, let's see here I can get help about using PWD I can get the version by typing dash dash version um, I can avoid sim links uh, or I can use logical and that will give me everything even if it contains sim links all right uh, I can push H for help on navigating this and put the focus back but arrow keys work just fine page down works just fine page up so I don't really need that help so I'm just gonna uh, push Q to quit at this point all right now just a couple things about speed um, instead of typing a command over again if I know that I want to do something a second time I can use the up arrow and it'll just scroll back through all the commands that I have recently used so there we go we can see some of the things I've done so that's up arrow um, there's another version the history so I can just type history and that's going to give me a list of all the commands I've typed going back a long time so I can see what's here and then you know if I need a refresher or want to remember something I can also use control R so there's control R and this is the search and so at this point all I need to do is start typing something let's see what have I done recently I did clear so all I need to do is type C and it brought up the most recent thing that begins with a C if I continue typing like D the most recent command beginning with CD is right there um, from there I can go uh, up arrow and start scrolling from that point so I'm like right there a CD demo all right so that's control R and using the history um, I use it all the time particularly when uh, I have a command to compile something and it's got a lot of options and I don't want to have to type it again okay I want to just go a little bit into uh, transferring files next so the thing uh, next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna open up PowerShell PowerShell I want this one right here without uh, ISC or x86 just the normal one from here let me think where did I save that file teaching CS 368 I forget what's here uh, Oh, that's right. 368 tab one will give me the first one. Tab two will give me fall 20. Then uh, homework. Homework. Yep. Homework one. There it is. Okay, this is the compiler test that you guys will download from the Canvas site. Stick it somewhere. Um, go to this directory. And now here's what I'm gonna do. Let me just uh, put both of these guys up side by side. Over here on the um, CSL Linux machine I'm gonna grab print working directory and then over here the command to copy a file actually this would probably work better let me arrange these windows so you can see everything one sec all right hopefully this is a little better my prompt here on PowerShell PS stands for PowerShell is very long because it contains the complete path all right now here's what I really want to do um, if I'm on Windows then I need to use uh, putty secure copy Yeah, PSCP is the command. Um, and so let me just go ahead and do this. I'm going to be copying this file, compiler test.cpp, to um, the CSL machine. Now, the command for that is going to be the whatever you use to log in with. Dosher at, no, nope, whoops, best linux.cs.wisk. 
app.edu. All right, so that's my login information. The next thing I need is I'm going to um, I need to type the colon, and now I can um, specify the directory where I want this to go. All right, if you remember, this slash u slash d slash o dosher is my home directory. So what I really want is everything after that much, because it's already. If I just leave it like this, it'll just go to the home directory, and I can navigate to the home directory, move it from there if I want. It's why I have a lot of junk in my home directory because I don't bother to do that. But I've learned I get lots of junk and then I can't find stuff. So instead, I need to type private teaching CS368 homework. Whoops. Homework. Homework one. Okay. And now that should copy the file to that directory. Let me just make sure this works. Now it's going to be asked for my password type that in yes and now if it works it tells me that it copied this file it's tiny it's in, it didn't take very long and it got 100% finished so if I go here now and I type ls I can now see that I have the compiler test.cpp file right here in my homework one directory all right so if you're on a Linux or Mac computer the you do not want to use the putty secure copy putty is for Windows Instead, what you want is just secure copy, SCP. That's the only difference between what we're going to do for Linux and Mac and Windows is Windows doesn't have this built-in uh, shell, um, secure shell uh, functionality. So we're required to make do using uh, PuTTY. All right, next up what I want to do is just show you guys a little bit more about here, what's going on with the... Um, that file we just copied, how to do the, the homework. So I'm going to open up uh, a text editor called Vim, and the file I want to look at is compiler test.cpp. Uh, if you just clicked on it in Canvas, you can see what's in there. When you guys do this homework, uh, fill out this header your name, your Wisconsin, uh, Wisc ID, your CS login, um, your 10 digit student ID number, and then when we run this code, it just all it does it right here, see out prompts you for your ID number. See, and we'll read in that ID number, whatever you type. Then it does some math and prints out a number. All I want you guys to do is run this code, compile it, run it, and then write whatever number it prints out right there. So hold on, let me just quit this and demo this. All right, to compile something, it's going to be G++, whoops, missed, is the command to compile something, dash O, is going to give me the um, option to provide a name for this. So I'm just going to call this uh, comp test. Yeah, it doesn't need an extension. We'll go with that. And then the file that I'm going to be compiling is compiler test.cpp. I can do WALL, capital W, to turn on all the warnings. Always valuable when you're working with your own code. And uh, uh, that's good. Let's call it just run this like this. All right, there were no warnings, no errors. It didn't print anything. It only prints bad stuff. So if I have a mistake, it'll print it out and let me know. When I do ls, I can now see that I have created the executable. It's got the little star and it's green. Um, comp test. So let me go ahead and, and just run this for you. There we go. Enter your student ID number. All right, please don't share my ID number with anybody. I'm, I'm not sure it's that valuable, but it just seems like that's a silly thing to like let everyone else see. All right, anyway, um, I enter that, and it gives me a code, uh, 780. So help me remember 780, guys. I'm going to go back. I'm going to use up arrow to get back to them. I'm going to go over here and write the number 780. Go ahead and fill the rest of this in. Mike, uh, that's my email. Uh, that one. All right, and I'm done. To uh, and I'll, There's a separate video about how to use Vim to make all of these additions. Um, after you're all done, here, let me just go ahead and quit. I'm going to need to get this file back on my own home computer so that I can upload it. So let me just scroll down right here. And I'm going to do that again from PowerShell and Windows or any kind of uh, your terminal <coughs> on Mac or Linux. And the command is the exact same command. I'm still going to be using secure copy, but now I'm going to be copying from, so it's always from and to. 
So this is dosher at bestlinux.cs whisk edu colon and now I need that directory. Let me think, what was it? Oh, it's right there on the screen. All right, and at this point, I also need to add the name of the file before it was just where I wanted it to go. So that was piler test.cpp, and now space. The second argument is where I want it to go when I copy it back. I'm going to use dot slash. I'm going to give it a new name because I don't want to rewrite over write over the file that I'm using for generating homework assignments. So let's call this ct. Uh, CT for compiler test.cpp. All right. <clears throat> there it is. It did successfully copy. Uh, it gives you an error message. Otherwise, it just tells you how long it takes. And now if I do ls, I can see that I have both files here, compiler test and ct.cpp. So that's pretty much all there is to this lab. Uh, let me put this together. I'll get it up on the web page. And then I'll make a video about using Vim for editing text. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit.